All right, hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another practice round. Today we have AB, two-time Pro yep. Tour champion. How's that feel? Uh, it happened pretty quick. It feels unreal, honestly. <laughs> it doesn't, still doesn't feel like it happened. <laughs> so, AB, obviously been one of the best for a while, starting to shine through and know, do what we all knew you could do. But overall, we're just gonna get into it today. We're out here at hole 10, the back nine at the Jonesboro, presented by Westside Tournament. AB is going for, you went what, first? Fourth, fourth, first. second, first. first or is there fourth, four events? Fourth, first, yeah. first, fourth, fourth, first. Yeah. Okay, so either you're gonna get first or fourth here. Uh, hopefully. Hopefully first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, let's jump right into it, guys. Yes, sir. Probably good. Yeah. First power shot of the day. <laughs> that looks more like fourth place to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, question for you though. Felt stiff, huh? So what, can you share with us like your journey into disc golf and what inspired you to pursue a profession? Because obviously like, I'm sure some <clears throat> of us know your like family story, you know, with like you guys finding disc golf, living on the disc golf course, all of that. But like, what was like the pusher for you to go, okay, hey, I want to, and this is a conversation, I mean, you and I have had to, conversations about this when you were yeah. in school and you didn't really know what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. What pushed you to kind of push for disc golf professionally? Then obviously like safe to say that it's working out very well. Yeah, I don't know. I've just like when I went to like high school and like college and like to find a job, people will tell you to do something you're passionate about and something you're good at. And I was like, I don't really like school that much. And I don't know if I'm like a finance guy or what I'm going to do in like the future, but I knew I was passionate about disc golf and I knew I was pretty good at it. So <clears throat> it just like flipped a switch in my head to where I was just going to go hundred percent into it. There you go. Yeah. You did it. But it doesn't look like it after that drive. I'm going to throw one more. <laughs> I would say you're pretty good. All right. Just do better than AB. <laughs> if I just do better than AB every hole, for three rounds. You win. I can't lose. <laughs> that's better. It's better, but. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Oh dude, I just laced it. What are you? Try some Athena action here. Are you really strong or is that disc just like beat up? It's really flippy, you should throw it. Okay. <laughs> hey y'all, a few quick things. One, if you go to gibsondiscgolf.com, we have two things going on there. We have a $65 mystery box. You get five premium discs and a disc with a possible uh, misprint. If you know, you know. If you want to join our subscription box, use code DREW. If you've never been a member before and you're gonna get 30% off your first month's box. Pretty good deal. Uh, this month we have unreleased MVP. Next month we're hoping for some Kristen Tatar action as we do have her for the next practice round. Thank you guys for tuning in. Go to teamdiscraft.com to support AB. He has a bunch of merch on there. Uh, I don't think any hats, like the cool one he has on now, but he does have some shirts. He does have hats on there actually. So make sure to go to discraft.com, support AB. Thank you guys so much. Let's get back to the video. What do you enjoy most about like competing not only like, obviously you were competitive in baseball, competitive in fingerboarding, whatever it is, like what, what do you enjoy most about like competing, obviously mainly disc golf, but like just in general, I know you're like a super competitive person, you know, a pickleball, whatever it is, like, you know, you want to be the best and you want to do well. Like, what do you love the most about that? Is it just the, the thrill and the chase of being the best that no matter what it is? Um, <clears throat> I think it's just the rush of like, <clears throat> when it comes down to anything close, it's like, I don't care if you're playing darts or anything. You can like feel that, yeah, like in your bones and your blood, and it's just like, it's an unmatched feeling. I don't know why people don't like doing like little competitions for like a couple bucks or stuff like that. And like literally everything, I'll do anything. Like I'll bet with anyone at anything. Like who can throw a, a blade of grass the closest to a coin or something. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's just the thrill of competition is just you can't beat it. So speaking of competition, speaking of that like feeling in your bones, what what was something that kind of helped you overcome like the you know you coming down the stretch and maybe not playing your best? You know, I mean, you you know it's a thing. I know it's a thing. Yeah. I mean, people on the internet really knew it was a thing. You know, and I know that you were reading those comments. I mean, when you and I were traveling together, you know, I knew it kind of would get to you sometimes yeah. or whatever. Like, how did you kind of, was it just you became so good that you you just succeeded and it just went in instead of missing? Or did you, like, beat something mentally to where you're like, okay, like, these people aren't going to bother me anymore by, you know, talking about me like this or saying this. And at the end of the day, I always like to say, like, hey, like, you're watching me play. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think that that's, like, maybe a mentality that you've taken. Yeah, it's just... Um... I've just found like a new confidence that I've like never had before and it's it's just helped me like play over it in my mind instead of like oh you might miss this you might lose again like for the 90th time or something to now it's like <clears throat> nobody else on the planet earth can do this you are the best player like just telling myself stuff like that yeah. mentally instead of like bad stuff is yeah. super no, helpful. I mean, it helps for sure. Yeah. Ace it. All right. What's up? You want to see? <laughs> go in. <laughs> How did that not go in? Ricky scared me because all is flipped over in rollers. Well, he's throwing. You Never mind. <laughs> What's he throwing? See, you got scared too. That's just the best I could do. Here, I didn't get scared. It's a sidearm. It's a sidearm hole? Yeah, I like that better. It's too Skull. easy. How do you approach practicing and training to like <clears throat> keep improving your game? Because obviously right now you're one of, if not the best player in the world. You know, how do you, how do you continue to either maintain that or get better? And obviously golf, disc golf is like cyclical, right? So like mm -hmm. you could be great this week and then you could fall into a five week slump. And like, obviously I don't hope that happens for you, but I mean, that's the game. I mean, Beth's done it, Ricky's done it. Everyone's done it. Who's been at the top. Yeah. How do you plan to like keep progressing and, or, if you're at the top, you know, like McBeth was for 10 years, like how do you plan to keep that kind of stationary and keep that game there? Is it putting? Is it upshots? Is it just mental? Because I, th I mean, I personally think you've had the skill forever, you know, and the talent and the, you know, ability. I just think it was a matter of you believing that as much as everyone else around you did. You know, so has that been something you've really worked on is like your mental stability when you show up to yeah. the course, you know? It's, to well, like, it's a bit physical as well because this year I just started – I developed this like stretching routine that I do before every single practice round and every single tournament round. And I've done it before every single round this season. And it just really gives me like a mental edge, like going into competition. It's like, <clears throat> I'm taking care of myself better than other people are. And that just instantly gives myself like a extra foot forward. So kind of like what Katrina does, where yeah. she feels like, you know, her grinding mm -hmm. in the gym and, you know, yeah. eating x diet you know she feels like she's just up to the course and there's already a couple under par mm -hmm. when everyone else is even yeah i mean that's a good mindset i mean and obviously for you it's it's proven you know i mean i feel like for you there was plenty of tournaments or events or weeks or months where you were one of the best and then yeah. there's tournaments or weeks or months or days or rounds where mm -hmm. it's like oh ab didn't show up today you know and that's part of our game but like i feel like you've really found this like groove even like the final round at texas states where it wasn't really going your way you weren't yeah you know per se playing your best and you know, you, you still battle persevered and won the event. Yeah, it's just like <clears throat> getting the... <laughs> All right. Yep. Thank you. Just quick flick, <laughs> flick me up real quick. <laughs> but yeah, it's just getting into that routine has just been crucial for me this season. And it's honestly boosted me to the next level. Sweet, there you go. Yes, sir. All right, what do we got here? Where's the tea sign? Oh. <sighs> oh, 
I'd say that's pretty good, huh? It's a little straight. Frickin' caught the holy finger. <laughs> <laughs> Three eighty. We're gonna pump a sidearm here. You ready, Drew? I'm ready if you are. <clears throat> All right, I have one question for you. Yeah. What's like a moment that stands out in your mind that was like particularly challenging that you overcame and like how did you do it? Like, was it a, a <clears throat> loss? Was it, you know, like overcame after the tournament or? During? Yeah. Yeah. Just like something that you, you know, you, you went through something that was possibly traumatic and you <laughs> maybe cried on the phone to grace or whatever. Then you, you know, you were able to like find a remedy and like push to the next level because of that. You feel, <clears throat> uh, well, obviously the European open was the most traumatic thing that's ever happened to me in my whole life. That was really tough to deal with. I didn't even feel like myself for like the whole rest of the year. It took me a couple months to get over it. But the way I did get over it was, I don't know, I just watched it over and over and read every single comment about it possible. And then I was like, well, I've, I've heard everything everyone has to say. Now it's time to get over it. And I really honestly haven't even thought about it at all. And I'd rather win that tournament than the world championships because I think that would be monumental for myself and push me even further in my career. Okay, and you got over it just by like kind of going through the yeah, being just hard like, on yourself, letting yeah. everyone be hard on you and like accepting that that's what happened and yeah, just like becoming reliving better. it enough times to where I just became desensitized to it pretty much. That's good advice. Yeah. So <laughs> ever, just take the abuse until it's not abuse a, anymore. If you ever take a 10 on a hole and lose a tournament, just replay it in your mind a thousand times and it'll work. Well, a tournament, that wasn't just a tournament though. Yeah, just a little tournament in a foreign land. Just a little C tier? Yeah. <laughs> and you get to go home to a place with no AC and just try to go to bed and there's the sun doesn't go down. Yeah. <laughs> what a day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be holding another one in my hand when I putt. Is that actually a thing? Yes, the rule. Do you think that that's like just come from practice or? It's just like putting with a bunch of putters. I don't know, it just feels natural to me. Do you own any hats other than that one? Why are you saying that? Is that your only hat? Uh, I have a, I have like probably 35 D-backs fitteds and then seven AB hats, but I don't know. I just broke this one out two days ago. <clears throat> if you want to buy one, you got to come see me when I bend because that's the only time I have them. Discraft hasn't made them yet, but we will. Come vent, come see me and Drew at the vending booths at every tournament. There we go. What do you think sets you apart from the other top players such as Gannon? Do you think it's what we talked about in the last tee of like your preparation and like that gives you an edge? Do you think it's your distance? Do you think it's your ability to... You know, I mean, I think you're the furthest though, or both backhand and sidearm, pretty unarguably. You know, do you think that's your advantage? Like, what do you think if you had to chalk it up to just one answer? Like, why Anthony Barella has an advantage over the other next best competitors? I think distance plays a huge part of it because <clears throat> now instead of where some of the people I play against have to throw it as hard as they can to throw like a 470 foot shot, I can really smooth down and down tempo like a, a driver and just. I don't know, I have like a, a new ability I found to like sh shape under stable drivers up to like 500 feet and I think that's a huge advantage for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always felt that way about my game, yeah. is I have an advantage. I mean, you always used to say, oh, you're the fan grip distance driver like specialist because yeah. I can throw my, you know, whatever distance driver 300 feet and AB was always like, dude, how do you do that? <laughs> but I think that was my advantage. Like I yeah. can get it to do exactly what I wanted and control the skip and, mm -hmm. and it's like, you know, if you're having to throw nuke into the green versus now throwing onyx or athena into exactly. the green you have more control it's not going to yeah. skip you know it i don't know i feel like people underestimate the amount of control that you're able to have but also like 
the word control becomes a huge thing, right? Like mm -hmm. if you just throw it as hard as you can, <clears throat> you might have zero control. Yeah. So it's being able to have the distance and the control, which is somewhere like, I think you're starting to hit that pinnacle of exactly. like having both. Yeah, it takes, like you gotta fully be grown into your body too, like growing like from what, when I was 17 to like 21, I was still growing. So I didn't even know what to do. My form was yeah, changing like every Dane. single day. <laughs> yeah. I haven't grown since fifth grade, so. <laughs> and yeah, it's just about just constantly putting in reps and just figuring it out. Like it always shifts. The well, game's I, always evolving. And I think that in your, like, obviously I've known you for a long time. We've played a lot together, traveled together. Like mm -hmm. I've seen your game almost all, more than anybody other than maybe Adam or a couple other people. Yeah. And I feel like watching you play now and watching your control and even like your putter up shots mm -hmm. and stuff like that, like I just feel like you're starting to yeah. hit that kind of peak of like maximum distance and maximum control, which is like the, the furthest thrower in our game has never been the best player Yeah. ever. You might be the first time ever. And obviously it's a short, I'm not saying you're the best to ever play, but yeah. like, you know, you might be the, the <clears throat> best player to ever be the furthest thrower. You know, Garrett, myself, I mean, when I was the first, I wasn't the best player. Garrett, no, wasn't ever the best player. Gannon isn't the furthest thrower. Macbeth, mm -hmm. Ricky, not the furthest thrower. I think you're the first person to ever, you know, be able to make a run at a distance competition and win the event. Yeah. Which is a pretty special thing to say because, I mean, that shows. It shows how the game's evolving, too. Well, and it shows your ability to, to throw it 750 and then be able to throw a backhand stand still putter up yeah. shot at 200 feet and control both of those shots. Mm -hmm. Pretty much yeah, what we're I mean, saying is you're a superstar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping I can keep it rolling and. It's just, I don't know, it's always been the plan and it's finally kind of falling into place. Yeah, I mean, at, so. at this rate, you just got to keep your stretching going and keep believing you're the best and uh -huh. I don't see what's going to stop you. <laughs> exactly. I'll make that. Yeah, that's an easy tap in, bro. <laughs> I wasn't even worried. I think it's beefy. Right when you let that thing go, I was like, man, that's parked. What's wrong with us? There's a lot of wind out there. Oh, it is, guys, it is like blowing like 40 <clears throat> or 35, 30, 40. I don't know. It's blowing pretty, pretty tough out here. I thought that was long. <laughs> How do you handle setbacks or difficult rounds during competition? And when I ask this question, I think of like, not that it was a difficult round at all because you still won and you persevered, but you know, the round, you know, the final round of Texas States, you know, you went into it with a pretty good sized lead. You kind of mm -hmm. lost the lead, you know, had some stuff happen, missed some putts. Other people were playing great. And obviously Gannon shot a, you know, 1100 rated round. So yeah. It's not like you were having a meltdown. It was just other people were playing good. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of battle that situation? And what are you telling yourself in those moments of, hey, just keep <clears throat> doing your thing? Is it... You know, what's kind of going through your head in those moments to keep you on track while also you can't control if Gannon shoots 1100 rated, you know, so. Yeah, it was uh, after hole 14, I looked at the scores and I only had Gannon by two strokes. And that's really where I had to mentally check myself into the round. And <clears throat> I was just telling myself, like, I've played these last four holes so many times that I can do this. And it just really comes down to the repetition of I've played these so many practice rounds of this course. Like I try to play at least two a day to pre prepare for a tournament, just to like give myself like I have birdied this if I have like a chance to win. And it just, I don't know. I just have this voice in my head playing when I like bogey a hole, and I'm just like, you can birdie the next hole. Like you've done it before. Like why not do it right now? It sounds like cliche, but like it works. And I've been, that's just been what I'm telling myself. Yeah, I mean that that's the thing. I'm sure that you know. I'm doing one of these with Beth. I mean, I, I, I can't wait to hear his answer to that. Yeah. Because you know, I think all of you, you know, I, I just call it peak performing. Mm -hmm. You know, you're peak performing right now. And, yeah. and however long it lasts, you and I don't know. Mm -hmm. I hope it lasts 10 years. You probably hope it lasts 30. But I mean, when it comes <laughs> to peak performing, you know, everyone has their, I mean, even me, I had a good stretch there where I, you know, got, I, I had some pretty good finishes around. It's like, I know what I was clicking into at those times. Mm -hmm. So it's always interesting for me to hear as another you know, top player, you know, what, what you're doing and what's going through your head, because obviously I only get to play disc golf through myself. So, yep. you know, having these questions with you guys and learning this myself 
and hearing what you know you might be thinking in that moment because obviously i'm watching thinking oh is yeah. ab you know crap in his pants or is he not mm -hmm. worried at all you know and i think it's a mixture of both it sounds like you know you're like okay hey i need to snap into this or else there's going to be an issue but you're able to tap into that you know skill and that preparation and be ready to play yeah and then mentally it's just been like super simple like in my head it's like it feels like the most like i don't really think about stuff as much this season as i have in past like both good and mm -hmm. bad like you don't think like you just focus on your your shot and then you like, just kind of go blank? Yeah. Okay. Literally just like my whole mind's blank while I'm playing and I just step up to it and I just execute. Like that's what's going through my mind when I'm playing. And it goes home it goes like with like my life at home is just like been consistent lately. There's like no stress in my life at all. And I don't know, it just all everything's working out right now. Well, dude. Hopefully it'll keep that, going. That makes me happy. Yep. <laughs> all right, show them uh, how people who throw far throw. All right. <laughs> that still went further than most people that was throw. Horrible. <laughs> Everything's coming out early. What just happened? That's a birdie, though. Dude, birdie every hole. <laughs> the heck? Dude, this wind is ruining my life. It's flipping everything. That'll play though. Dude, easy birdie on this hole. <laughs> what is going on? I don't know. All right, so you just mentioned like your life at home is is very simple. You know, you're not having any stress, and, and maybe that's something that obviously when you're in college was a little, your life was a little more stressful, a little more hectic. What are your goals? Not only like professionally on the course, but also like. Personally, you know, we know you have Grace at home, you know, are you guys trying to buy a house? Are you trying to, you know, start a family in the next 10 years? Like what's kind of some of your goals, not only on the course, but off the course as well that you and Grace have been talking about or planning for or whatever? Yeah, I mean, I obviously want to be married and have a family and have kids and buy a house, but I don't really have a timeline on any of that right now. I'm just like focused on disc golf. But also something I've been, I've always wanted to do was like growing up, I wanted to go to like a disc golf camp and I think I would like to buy a property like up north in like Flagstaff or Prescott in Arizona and develop some sort of camp that kids can come to and just like learn about disc golf and play it. Well, not like learn about it, like learn how to get better. Like they obviously have already been playing and like want to do it because that's like been a dream of mine since I was a little kid is to like own my own camp and stuff like that and be like kind of like a trainer and like a coach to little kids and stuff like that. Well, that's that's pretty sweet. So, and then professionally, like what, obviously, I mean, I'd say every single person that signs up for these things and is on the pro tour, you know, wants to win a world or wants to win a, you know, do you have a, would you like to win one world, 12 world? I mean, like, do you have any goals when it comes to that? Like, would you be happy with one major in the next t 15 years of your career? Or are you shooting for higher? And I mean, I think that there's some point of, you know, uh, your goal is being lofty enough for people to laugh at you, you know, and I think yeah. that you're a, a human that could accomplish even a goal that others not, might think is funny, you know, so I think it's a fun question to ask you, like, hey, what do you think you could do if you continue on this trajectory and this, you know, the path you're on? I think that the, you know, the sky's the limit for you, really, as long as you're able to stay healthy and keep in the yeah. same mindset you're in. Uh, I don't like to make goals like that, like how many worlds or how many majors or stuff like that. I don't have any expectations of that stuff at all. I just want to, like, I just want to do stuff that, like, no one has ever and could ever, like, do. Like, I want to throw crazier shots than, like, the holy shot and stuff like that. I don't know. I just want to I just want to do stuff that people think is impossible, pretty much, with, like, a disc. I think that you've already done some of that. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> I don't know. Moving forward, it, I have no idea. Like, I'd like to win as many majors as Macbeth, but I don't know if that's plausible these days with like the talent, but yeah, there's like, I don't even know. I just don't even think about it. Like I didn't even expect to win. I was hoping for just like one this season and I won the very first event. And I think like having that zero expectation, like mindset has helped me a so, lot. So when you won the first one, you didn't then go, okay, I want to win another one? Or you did, like, what What was kind of your, and again, if this is something you don't think about, then just say, hey, 
yeah. dumb question, which is fine. But like your goal was to win one, right? You won the first event. Mm -hmm. What what do you after that did you not get in the car or you fly home and think, hey, what's one or two more? Like you just you just still had zero expectations for the next tournaments going forward, or did you start to think like, oh hey, maybe maybe me winning two or three this season isn't isn't that crazy? Yeah, I, after I won that first one, it was just a huge, like, monkey off the back. Like, I can finally, like, I know I can do this. So my expectations were still, like, if I'm playing, like, if I'm playing good that week, I can win the, every single tournament. So that's, like, what I'm thinking in my mind is if it just all clicks together, it can happen. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm going to throw this little dink up shot. <laughs> In the moment, I have, like, a mindset where I go, okay, I'm going to win this tournament, like, now. Yeah. But before a tournament, I'm just like, all right, go out there, play solid, and just... See what happens. Do your thing. Is that the worst day of your life? What would I you mean, do if you I, lost that I disc? can get it back, huh? <laughs> What would you do if you lost that disc? I can't lose that disc because I won't stop looking for it until it's found. <laughs> <laughs> so it's unlosable. How much I is that say. disc worth to you? Twenty thousand? If someone, I don't even honestly know. If, if someone, I stole your bag and said, "AB, I'll sell you this disc back," what would you pay for it? I would pay twenty thousand. Yeah, it's made me more than that. <laughs> 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 that disc for me is like, it's like the team captain of my bag. So like. If that thing is not in my bag, like, the other discs are not going to... I'm just not going to have any confidence in anything, honestly. It literally... It rules over all my other discs, tells them what to do. So that, that one's in charge? Yeah. Is it in charge of you, too, or Pretty are much. you its leader? If I, if I don't have that disc in my bag and I try to play a tournament, I'm not going to play good because I know I don't have it. <laughs> it's, like, a weird thing. I don't know. <laughs> I've gotten into plenty of ponds and... Hopped fences I shouldn't have just to get this guy back. Always get it back though. Dude. What? Hit it a little fat. <laughs> it extended. Alright. <clears throat> How do you balance your disc golf career with other aspects of your life? Whether it be your friends or other hobbies or anything like that. How do you kind of Make the distinction on, you know, when you're going to go home, what weeks you're going to take off, what you might do, and, and how do you feel, like, confident in those choices? Um, nowadays, now that the tour is, like, shorter, there's not many Silver Series this year. I'm just going to, every time there's a break on the tour, I just go to the airport, leave my car there, and fly home. And that's been, like, crucial this year is just, like, knowing I'm not, knowing I don't have to, like, spend two months away from two, three months away from my family or my girlfriend or my friends is just, like, mentally better for me. Yeah. I so, mean, yeah, every, every time there's a break on the tour, I'm just, I'm going to be going home. And then during the off season, what do you, you know, do you hang out with Cole and the boys and, you know, do you play two rounds a day? Do you putt a minimum of 100 putts? Like, what's something you kind of do in the off season to keep you uh, dialed in? Or do you take a month off and say, hey, I'm not going to disc golf. I'm going to go enjoy my life and golf and go to some Suns games and, you know, what's kind of your off-season look like in the terms of what you're willing to take off or do? Yeah, uh, off-season, I do. I did a lot of strength training and stuff like that, speed and agility training. And all my friends back home love disc golf, so I'm playing, like, almost every single day still because, like, they just love to come out and play with me and just have fun. And my family loves disc golf, so I don't really take it any, like, weeks or anything off of disc golf at okay. all. So I'm just always constantly playing. Let's see a Kratos ace. You ready? This one's for Niklas. <laughs> Can't reach it. Pretty good. The W? Yeah, doubles. Oh, doubles, yeah. yeah. Last question. What would you tell someone that's aspiring to be 
a professional disc golfer or just improve their game. Whether it's a 10 year old kid or a 20 year old dude that just got out of college and wants to try his hand. What, what's something you'd tell them? Is it practice regimen? Is it belief? You know, what would you tell them? Um, someone aspiring to be a pro, I would tell them to play as many C, B, and A tiers as possible in your local area. And if you really want to make it on the pro tour, I would tell them to go move somewhere that has a bunch of, like, somewhere like Charlotte and play like a B, A, C tier every single weekend and then just learn how to win pretty much. And compete just, and yeah. be in those situations. That's the thing, like, honestly, like, spend a couple of years on it too. It's just, that's what I did. I played up every single local tournament I possibly could and tried to win all of them until I felt like I couldn't lose a, a tournament in Arizona, which is hard though, but yeah. And then finally moved on to the pro tour. I see a lot of people come out on the tour who have like one or two B, C tier wins and like try to compete. And it's like, you have to, you have to level up and work your way up. Like, has there been anyone on the, who's won like an elite series who hasn't won? Oh, Will Shustrick won 15 the- 15 pro tours? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, Will Shustrick won before he ever won an A tier. Okay, Nate yeah. Doss won the Worlds before he ever won an A tier, I'm pretty sure as well. But yeah, yeah but I mean, I'm not sure very many they, people. Yeah, they still played yeah. hundreds of B and C tiers, but. But thank you so much, dude. Yeah, of course. That was fun. If you guys want to support AB, where can they support you? Uh, Teamdiscraft.com or give me a follow on Instagram and subscribe to my YouTube channel also. I there you know. go. I will, I'll link AB's channel in the very beginning of this video. So if you've made it this far, thank you so much. I know it's a commitment to make it this far in these videos. We appreciate it. Head on over to infinitedisc.com to grab my signature disc and all of your other disc golf needs if you're not shopping only for AB. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you in the next one.